Hey everyone, this is lesson 912 on parabola investigation. Now, technically we've already uh, talked about parabolas uh, earlier in our book. I think it was chapter 5. Uh, we talked about quadratic equations, quadratic functions, um, and the graph of those look like a parabola. And so uh, we've seen kind of the the basics of how to graph a parabola, uh, but we haven't uh, really looked into uh, different variations of those graphs. So uh, let's start with, uh, I have some notes here uh, that really I've just taken from, most of these I've taken from um, prior notes uh, because it's stuff that we will be utilizing moving forward since it has to do with quadratics. So a reminder of what a quadratic function looks like in standard form. So traditionally we would see any quadratic in standard form when we're going to factor possibly. Uh, and then if we had, if it is factored, then it would be in factored form. And the benefits of factor form is uh, it, it's a nice, uh, easy way to get our x-intercepts. So when graphing, uh, that might be some useful points uh, for us as well. Uh, and uh, these notes, in these notes, we'll be talking about a more of a general form focused on graphing. Uh, and so we'll talk about this formula uh, towards the end of the notes. We'll come back to this and explain um, the benefits of it uh, written in this form. So uh, we're going to come back to that form. Uh, another reminder I wanted to give you, uh, I think I've given you this a couple times, is the parts of a parabola. So since we are going to be focused a lot on graphs on, in these notes, uh, we will be graphing a lot. Um, it's important for you to make sure you understand the points, uh, how to plot points, uh, there, if there's any special names. Uh, so y-intercepts, you understand what y-intercepts are and how to write those coordinates. Uh, same thing with x-intercepts, making sure you know they're on the x-axis and how to write those coordinates. Um, also making sure you could identify where the vertex is in a graph and um, I think uh, line of symmetry would be another good thing to, to know as well. So this is, I actually uh, took these exact same notes from, it might have been from a chapter five notes. Uh, these are, uh, it's important for you to understand the graph. Uh, in the next uh, couple pages, we'll be doing, I think like eight, possibly eight different graphs. So uh, we will have a lot of them. So uh, at, I'm going to be giving you some equations to graph. Uh, now I'm going to be showing you uh, how to graph it uh, without a graphing calculator. Uh, but for the most part, if you ever get stuck, uh, if you're trying to do it by hand uh, and you're struggling, uh, then I would recommend that you use the on an online graphing calculator like Desmos. So Desmos dot com has a calculator that lets you um, graph nicely so if I type in y equals x squared it's gonna give us a nice uh, graph of that parabola so feel free to use that uh, during this lesson if you can because uh, I'm gonna be giving you some equations to graph so some of you might would might rather see it on the graphing calculator um, as you're copying it down to your notes uh, so the notes I'm going to give you actually start uh, are from a handout. So I'm going to try to make this available to you, those of you um, uh, that are in set up in my Google Classroom. Uh, if you if it's not there, let me know and I can send you a copy of this because um, I already have graphs or uh, grid set up, uh, coordinates, uh, coordinate plane set up. Uh, and a X and Y table so it would save you probably a lot of time if you're able to uh, download and print it out 
uh, it would probably uh, save you a lot of time. Uh, otherwise, everything that's on here could easily be still drawn on paper uh, if you can't uh, print that paper out. So, all right, so let's start uh, going over this. So, for most of these problems, I'm going to be giving you an equation similar to this y equals x squared. Um, and what I want you to be able to do is to plug points or values of x, different values of x, into this equation, uh, which would be coming from these points. So we're going to plug these points into this equation. And when we put those points in, we're going to get a y value, and that's going to be the y values on the right side of the table. Once we're done with that, these are technically coordinates that we could plot on the graph. So negative 2, 4, negative 2, 4 is on the graph. Or negative 1, 1 is another point on the graph. Right? So all we're doing is trying to generate a list of coordinates so that we could plot them. And once we've plotted all those points, then we should be able to connect them and you'll notice we will have a parabola. Now all the parabolas are gonna look pretty similar. It's, there's just gonna be some subtle uh, differences when we start to graph these. All right, so um, let me, I'm gonna explain a lot. Of, there's gonna be some of these uh, notes where it's gonna be pre-populated. So you would just be copying it down, uh, but I will be explaining um, a little bit of this uh, so that you understand where these numbers are coming from or why I have this work uh, on the page. All right, so, uh, and when you do plot your points, uh, making sh make sure they are accurate. Uh, so uh, these, are, these pl points are not placed randomly. Um, so make sure if you don't have graph paper, this is gonna be super hard for you. Uh, so I would recommend getting graph paper um, if you have a printer, you could even print out graph paper, uh, at least for this lesson, uh, it will help you tons. All right, um, let's start with uh, the first step, and that is we're going to plug in values of x. So let me zoom into this. So in our table, x and y table, I've selected these numbers, right? A lot of times students will ask, well, where did you get these numbers from? Well, these numbers came from my head. And how did I know to use these numbers and not other numbers? Well, I basically looked at this number line, which is the x-axis, and I'm gonna pick numbers that are on this line. So there's me picking negative 12 wouldn't make any sense because it's not, it's not on the graph. So common, we commonly choose numbers that are probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, there's no guarantees that those points are gonna work. Sometimes not till you plug in numbers, do you know whether you pick the right numbers. Uh, so because I have an idea of what we're doing here, uh, I've chosen numbers intentionally to work out nicely. All right, uh, and most of the ones we're gonna be using will most likely be these numbers, except for a couple that I will change the X values. All right, so uh, in this uh, equation, uh, we're going to, we wanna replace our X really with any number. So I would recommend anytime you're trying to evaluate plug-in numbers, uh, replace the X with parentheses. Uh, if you don't put parentheses, you will get different answers. So a lot of this might be calculator work as well. So parentheses are going to be your friend uh, when getting correct answers. So in this case, I'm going to take negative 2, I'm going to plug it into the parentheses, and I'm left with y equals to negative 2 squared, or parentheses negative 2 squared. If in the calculator you do not put the parentheses, if you happen to type y equals to negative, or if you're not doing y equals, if you just do 
negative 2 squared, it's going to give you a negative 4 answer, which is not correct. Right, so we don't want negative 4. You'll notice I have a 4. So negative 2 squared, I'm looking at negative 2 times negative 2, which gives us a positive 4. All right, so I'm reviewing a little bit of uh, how to multiply numbers out, positive and negative numbers, uh, because we're going to be doing a lot of that in these problems when we're graphing. All right, so uh, we're plugging in all these numbers, and this is the result. Uh, so I've shown you all the work. I would recommend, uh, at least for the first few graphs, uh, to show all your work. Uh, like this, we're plugging in numbers. If you feel you're getting really good at it, then at some point you could stop. But I would recommend you uh, copy this down or have a workout uh, for your own benefit. Because when you look at notes, it's going to be very helpful just for a quick second for you to see, oh yeah, I now I remember what we need to do. But if you don't have any of that, it's going to be very challenging for you. All right, so I've plotted each of these points. You'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five points. Uh, and so if you need a review on how to graph, uh, please let me know. Uh, but for the most part, uh, we always start on the x-axis. So negative 2, 4, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0 is at the origin. And then 1, 1, and then 2, 4. So you'll notice I have these five points, but on my graph I've actually included some additional points. Right? So I've added two more points that are not on my table. Uh, I would recommend uh, doing some extra points until there is no more room on your graph. So common mistake is when we're graphing, I'll see students that do this. Uh, they might graph it like this. Uh, and you can see, if they graph it like this, uh, it doesn't quite look like the original parabola. All right, so it's going a little bit too wide. Or the other, my other thing might be true where they go too narrow, all right, and they miss those points. So when you're graphing, I'm going to look for accuracy of your graphs. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're not sure how to get these extra points, all I'm doing is plugging in a Oops, all I'm doing is plugging in a negative 3 to get to give me a positive 9, and I'm plugging in a positive 3 to give me a positive 9. All right, so those are the other two. I just didn't show it in the table because then the table starts to look a little bit too large. All right. All right, so this is the foundation of what we're working with. So we need to know what this graph looks like, y equals to x squared. All the other graphs we're going to look at after this are we're going to compare it to this first graph. All right, so this is uh, this is the main uh, graph that we're focused on. And so everything after, um, I'm already going to have a picture of the original. Like you can see on problem number two, I already have this same graph. This is the same one. Right, this is the same graph. You're going to see this over and over again. This, this graph is not this graph. So we have to graph this new equation. All right, so we're going to do that in a number of times. So there is, uh, on this page, I think there's, how many is there? One, two, three, four. And then I think there's four on the next page as well. All right. So any point you need to pause it because you're copying down, please do so. Um, all, right. all right, I'll leave it right there. So our new equation is y equals to negative x squared. So we're, this looks almost identical to the original, except we've included this negative in front. So in front of the x squared, there's a negative. And so what we're going to do is, same work, we're going to plug in uh, all those values, same values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. 
and you'll notice, you'll notice uh, again, I'm still replacing uh, the X with parentheses and the number. And our goal is to calculate this. So I would recommend that you try plugging these into the calculator. You don't have to put Y equals. You could just put negative parentheses, negative two squared, uh, and make sure you're getting these answers. Uh, test out a few of them just to make sure uh, you know how to use a calculator to get these answers because uh, I can guarantee it at some point you're gonna do some make some mistakes uh, doing some mental math because um, it, it just happens every single year right this is uh, a time where accidents happen with calculations all right, so hopefully you're copying this down. Uh, this is the work to get all our coordinates. And so, like I said before, each of these are their own individual points that you're going to plot on graph number two. Okay, so uh, I'm going to plot these. So I'm going to go to negative two, negative four, which is going to be down below. Okay, so that's different. Uh, negative one, negative one, so negative one on the x-axis and one down on the y, so that's also below. Zero, zero, we're right at the origin again. And we're looking at one, negative one. We're going to the right some more, except it dropping back down, and then two, negative four. To negative four. All right, so I still have room for some more points. So if I put in, uh, I'm going to put in a three. So three squared is nine, but I have a negative in front of it. So that's going to give me a negative nine. So if I put in three, I should end up at nine. And so the nice part about parabolas is that they are symmetrical. Right, so I'm already noticing we have a parabola that looks like this. I've put in one point, and so I should know that because there, there is a line of symmetry that goes down the middle, I don't really have to plug in numbers to know that there's going to be a matching point over here. All right, so on the left side. So if I already know a three negative nine is a point, then that must mean that negative three, negative nine is also a point. All right, so that means we're gonna have a parabola. Let me see if I could sketch a good picture of this. All right, it's not always easy, that's for sure. All right, so I like to add arrows to make sure it looks like it's going forever. All right, so now we have on the same graph, uh, this, is, this is y equals negative x squared, and the one above it was y equals two x squared. So these are two different graphs. Uh, and so what we wanna do on the right side is how, we wanna compare them. So how is the parabola different from y equals x squared? So this new one, how is it different? All right. So um, we're going to be introducing some terminology that you need to be familiar with. And so for the most part, uh, some key words that we're looking for is really how is it facing? How is it facing? So the original one is facing upward. It looks like a smiley face. Right, so the original one is facing upward. It, it's, um, yeah, it looks like a, maybe it's a smiling face. Um, and this new one, it looks maybe like a frown. And so uh, it looks, it, you might say it's open downward instead of open upward. Uh, we also might describe the orientation instead of being positive, right, smiling, having a positive attitude, 
uh, we'll say it's negative orientation. So those are some words that I'm going to use to describe this. So uh, I'm going to say it's open uh, downward. That's one way of describing it. Uh, and then another way is to say it has a negative orientation. All right, so these are these words that uh, you need to know. So this is what a typical test question might look like. I might give you a picture of a graph, uh, and I'm just going to tell, ask you, uh, describe the graph. And I'm going to be looking for words like negative orientation or open downward. So that's why you need to know these terms because you will be using them to describe graphs moving forward. All right, so we're going to do the same thing except we're going to do it um, with uh, a lot more variations of the graph. So number three, number three we're looking at um, y equals to two times x squared. So this is taking that original graph, x squared, and putting a 2 in front of it. And we want to see what happens to the graph uh, if we uh, basically double everything. So this one I haven't worked out anything because uh, I want to show you the process. And so I figured I'll show it on this one. And so uh, if I was doing this by hand, Right. Uh, if you if you're using decimals calculator, um, feel free to uh, type that in. Uh, it'll give you a picture of the graph, and, and you could go from there. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm going to show you how to generate points uh, by hand. So I'm going to do y equals to two times parentheses x squared, and I'm going to do this for all my terms. You'll notice I still don't have I still don't know what my x values are going to be. Um, and so how many is this? Y equals so I'm showing sure you'll notice it's the same work. I'm just copying it over. What I do need to know is what x values I want to plug in. So um, I think I'm going to stick with the same range that we had before and I believe that was from negative 2 to positive 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for now. Uh, it's always nice to have some negative numbers, maybe 0, and some positive numbers. Uh, that kind of gives you a variety uh, of outputs. All right. So then I would plug in these numbers. So I plug in negative 2. And when I plug in negative 2, I want to put that into the calculator and see what it gives me. So this is where I'm going to ask you to actually plug that in the calculator and see what it, see if you could do this correctly. Um, you could use uh, any calculator you want. I would recommend using uh, a decimals, maybe scientific calculator. Uh, if you could find that one, the scientific calculator. It also works on the graphing calculator as well. Um, or maybe the Google calculator. So let me know what this equals uh, and see if you could get that correct. All right, so let's see. Um, hopefully, if you did this, you did negative 2 squared. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And so that means I have 2 times 4, which is 8. So if you said 8, then you would be correct. All right. You just follow the same process for all these. So plug in a negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 2, which gives us 2. All right, so you should be able to fill, fill in uh, all of those. And this leaves us with, uh, I believe this is 82028. All right, so you'll notice there's a pattern, right? Because of the symmetry, you'll notice 
uh, there's repetition with some of those numbers, right? So look for some shortcuts. Um, they might help you a lot, so that way you don't have to do a lot of extra calculations. All right, so let's plot these. So I'm going to plot uh, negative 2, positive 8. So negative 2 is to the left, and it's going to go up to positive 8. And then negative 1 is to the left, and I'm going to go up to positive 2. That's also up. 0, 0, we're still at the origin. And then one, two, you should notice at any point it doesn't, if it does not look like a parabola, if it does not look like a parabola, like a U shaped, then something's wrong with your points. So you've plotted your points incorrectly. So you might make, need to erase those and make adjustments. All right. So. It doesn't look like I need to add any more points. I don't think they would fit any, anyways. So those five are perfectly fine. And I'm gonna see if I could sketch a parabola that goes through those. And it should go look like that. I always like to do half of one parabola and then let's see if I could do the other. All right, so something like this. All right, so this one all right, so this is the inside one. All right, you'll notice we still I still have the old one. Right, I still have the old one um, on the graph, so we could compare them. And so, how are they different? So on the previous ones, it was open downward. It was a negative orientation. Well, this is not open downward. It's still open upward. Um, but I want to know what's different about it. So how are they different? They're not exactly in the same place. Um, it looks, although the vertex is in the same place, these other points are not, right? So it looks a bit skinnier or more narrow. And the way we describe that is, we will say it is stretched, in this case, um, this is, vertically. All right, so this is stretched vertically or it has a vertical, uh, it's vertically stretched, meaning if you're not sure what uh, vertically means, so horizontal, like the horizon goes left to right. Vertically uh, goes up and down. And so stretched is kind of like if this was a rubber band. If I actually grabbed, uh, let's say, the original the original graph and I pull it up like a rubber band. Uh, I don't know if you have a rubber band near you, but you might want to try this. Uh, if you're holding one point, uh, if you're putting like, let's say, one finger on, your, on the rubber band at the bottom and you pull the top of the rubber band up, you should notice that the walls of the of the rubber band will get closer to each other, right? So these walls are going to get more narrow, right? So this is why when we stretch it, it looks it looks more narrow. All right, so we'll leave it like that for now. That description. And let's go on to the next one. All right, so this next one is very similar. Um, the change is going to be a similar change, except instead of us putting a 2 in front of the x squared, we're going to put a 1 half. So instead of it getting larger, numbers multiplied by 2, uh, we're going to multiply it by a 1 half to see how that affects our graph. All right, so I've changed the x values on this one. Uh, because of there's a 1 half, uh, I, make, I wanted to make sure we were using numbers that give us nice uh, answers. So I've selected these for us instead. So negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and positive 4. 
uh, which means we're going to be going a bit wider and we want to see what happens in that range. All right, so let's uh, plug those in. Let's plug those in and see what they give us. Y equals to negative, oops, not negative, to one half something squared, right? So we're going to plug in, um, oops, we're going to plug in our negative four, right? Negative four was the x value we're going to plug in. So this would be negative four squared, right? Order of operations says to always do the exponents first. Uh, if you're doing it by head, in, in, if you're doing it in your head, then you definitely need to make sure you know the order of operations. If you're not sure about order of operations, then for sure you need to be using a calculator. Uh, and so I would recommend that you type it all in together. If you learn how to do that so that you could, uh, so that you minimize hopefully some uh, mistakes. So negative four squared is going to be positive 16. So this would be 1 half times 16. And then we're looking for half of 16, which is going to give us 8. Right? So this is going to give us an output of 8. All right, so let's see if you could do the second one. I'll ask you for the answer of this one. So if we're going to plug in a negative 2, then tell me what this equals to. Neg 1 half times negative 2 squared. All right, so if you did this in your head, uh, then hopefully you're doing the negative 2 squared first. Um, or even if you're doing a calculator and you're doing it in pieces, hopefully you're doing this part first. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. And we're looking for half of that. So half of 4 is 2. So hopefully you got 2. All right, so then we're going to plug in the rest of these. And so anytime you plug in zero here, zero times, um, zero times um, itself is zero. And zero times a half is going to be zero. All right. And then we're going to plug in a positive 2 and a positive 4. And I already know it's going to give us the same answers of 2 and 8 in reverse order. All right, I don't even need to do calculations because I already know our line of symmetry for this graph is going to go through 0, 0. All right, so let's plot these points. Negative 4 is to the left. Positive 8 is going to go up. Negative 2 is to the left, and positive 2 goes up. 0, 0 is at the origin again, right? All of these have been at the origin so far. 2, 2, positive 2 is to the right, and up positive 2. And then positive 4 is to the right, and positive 8 is up. All right. So... Now we're starting to see it does kind of look like a parabola, right? Except it looks a little bit different than the original. Oops, it looks a little bit sloppy, but all right. So this is what we're looking at. All right, so hopefully this is the graph you have or that you're copying down. Again, make sure your points are accurate. Um, sketches of these are not going to be helpful for you. Um, the whole point is that you have accurate points. All right, so um, how is this new graph different than 
y equals x squared, right? So remember, this inside one is y equals x squared, uh, and this other one, this new one, is y equals to 1 half x squared. And so what we're doing is we're trying to compare these two. How are they different? Well, they both, they both go through the origin. They're both um, facing upward, right? So there's, those are things they have in common, but what's different about them? Well, it looks like this new one is a bit wider, right? So on the previous problem, it was more narrow, it was skinny. On this one, it seems to be, be a bit more wide. All right, so how do we describe that? Um, in this case, we could describe it as um, well, there's a couple ways. So we could say it's compressed uh, vertically. So this is the opposite of being stretched. So stretched means you've pulled it. Uh, we're pulling it up. So here we were pulling it up. In this case, we're actually pushing down on this. So imagine if like if this was a, maybe it was a bag um, and we're putting, we're putting let's say sand inside of it or water. Uh, once you start putting enough inside of it, it's the walls are going to start to bulge and they're going to get wider. So this is what we call uh, vertically compressed or compressed vertically um, or it could be considered stretched or sometimes the book will say it's stretched horizontally all right so hopefully this doesn't confuse you um, let me know if you have specific questions on on the difference between those uh, but you're gonna need to understand the difference between uh, horizontal and vertical, and the difference between being stretched and compressed, right? So uh, it's really just understanding the words and knowing that these two things mean the same thing. All right, so let's go on to the next ones. All right, so here we have, I already have these done for us, uh, just to kind of speed up the process. Uh, so I'll give you, um, I'll show you the next two, five and six. All right, and I'll just talk about these uh, while you are copying them down. Uh, we're, our goal is to do the same thing, uh, understand how to plug in numbers, how to create a table, how to graph it, and how to describe it, right? Those. These are, it's literally, these are test questions uh, that I end up putting on, um, you'll either see it on your individual test and or mastery test. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're looking at on number five, y equals to x squared minus five. So this time we're not putting a number in front of the x squared, but now we're subtracting a five at the end, right? How does that impact our graph? Uh, when we are plugging in numbers, you'll notice I kept the same structure. Um, still order of operations says to do the exponents first, and then at the end, you're going to subtract five. When you do so, uh, you should end up with these numbers, right? If you need to verify that, I would su suggest trying to do some of these in your head and see if you get these same answers. If you're not, uh, then use the calculator to see if you could at least get it using the calculator. You need, a, you need to understand if you're able to do this in your head or not, or if you could use a calculator or not. So definitely test out your skills. Um, you're going to need to know that, especially on um, a day of a test or in your homework. All right, so I've graphed these, I've plotted these points already, and I notice that 
Um, it's not. One thing that has changed is, is the vertex. The vertex is no longer in the same place. So that right away is something different. The vertex is in a different place. And so that really is the only change that has occurred. Even though it looks like it's wider, right? Because it looks like the points are wider, but it's an optical illusion, right? It just, it's not really, it's not really wider. And so let's see if I can show you, show you that. So if I actually take this graph, hopefully I don't screw this up. So, and I slide it upwards, you'll notice it fits I, right on top of the original. It's the exact same graph. It's the exact same graph, except it's been moved, it's been moved five units down. All right, so if it's the exact same, except it's just been moved, then that's how we would describe this. So we would describe this as being shifted down, we could say it's shifted down, and we want to say how much it's been shifted down. In this case, it went from zero to negative five. So it's been shifted down five units. Okay. Uh, and then as we're going on to the next one, uh, we have y equals 2x squared plus 1. y equals 2x squared plus 1. Now this one, uh, this one is not only is it, it's changed, make sure, make sure you can see this. So, sorry, let me back up. So on number 5, we were subtracting a 5 at the end here. On number six, it looks like we've changed that minus five to a plus one. And we've also included this two in front of the x squared. All right, so um, let me remind you of a couple of things we've already seen. We've already seen y equals to two x squared, right? That was from a previous graph we just saw. And if I remember correctly, that one looked skinny. It was stretched. So that tells me this graph is potentially going to start to look stretched. But it has a plus one. What is the plus one going to do? Well, on the previous problem, I had a minus five. And that told me that the graph was going to be shifted down five units. So if it's a plus one, then we could say, well, it's probably going to do another shift except is it going to do shift down or is it going to shift up? So, and by how much? So the first thing, when we actually plot these, you should notice, right, I plotted these points. And so this looks like this little one inside. So the vertex is not in the same spot, right? So it doesn't look like it's in the same spot. It's been moved, it's been shifted by how much? Right, and in what direction? All right, so let's see if you could tell me that one. Um, I'll start with shifted. Yeah, is this shifted up or is it shifted down? And by how many units? See if you could tell me that. Okay, so if you said it's been shifted up, you, you were correct, and the number of units would be one unit, all right? Shifted up one unit, but that's not all that's going on. I mentioned there was a two in front of the x squared, and so that two, if we remember from the previous graph, right? I'll just scroll up two, there's one with a two, we said that this was right, stretched vertically. All right, so we could use those same words to describe this. So I'm gonna put, this is stretched vertically. 
All right. And that's that's pretty much it. Okay. So this, I think this is this is the last one. All right. So here we have uh, on gra on number seven. This is what we're building up to. So you'll notice now this has a lot of stuff going on. And probably, uh, usually at this point, um, it's this looks like it's something more complicated, but we know enough to get an idea of what this graph would look like. Now I've given you I've given you different x values here, so you might notice these are different. It's going from negative four to positive one. So I've sh I've shifted this graph over over here in this range. And um, and so we have all these outputs. All I've done is replace all the x's with um, I've replaced this x with all these x values, right? So just like we normally do. This is where it might get tricky for some of you. If you're not good with doing uh, some of this in your head, I would recommend you get used to writing it out very clearly so that you know exactly what you're typing into a calculator. So we have a negative in front. All right, we have a negative in front. So I'm going to write out some stuff without even graphing it. Without even graphing it, I'm going to write out what I think this might look like, how it's going to be different. So, or, or maybe you could tell me, what is it going to mean for us to have this negative in front. So we saw, already saw a graph. We already saw a graph um, earlier. Uh, how would we describe the orientation of this graph? So I'll give you a hint. Is this going to be? Is this graph going to be um, a positive graph, or is it going to be a negative graph? Right? Is it going to have negative orientation or is it going to have positive orientation? You tell me. So let me write out um, um, so this is going to be something orientation. So you tell me, what is this? Positive orientation or negative orientation? All right, if you said Negative, you were correct, right? So I know it's going to have negative orientation, which already tells me this is going to be look like a sad face. Now I just need to know where it's located. Now I do notice this minus three at the end. Now earlier we saw one with a minus five at the end, and it was shifted down five units. So this tells me it's most likely going to be shifted down three units, right? Um, but I also noticed there's this plus two, x plus two. So we haven't really seen uh, what's happening there. So uh, is this going to shift or is this going to just, is it going to do something else? Now let's plot these points and see what happens. So I'm going to plot negative 4, negative 7. So negative 4 is to the left, and then negative 7 is down. So that's here. Negative 3, negative 4. Negative 3, negative 4. Negative 2, negative 3. And then negative 1, negative 4. Oh, wow, it's starting to go back down. 0, negative 7. Ooh, we have a y-intercept, and then 1, negative 12 is not even on the graph. It's going to be somewhere down here. All right, so um, let's look at sketching this. Let me zoom into this. So I'm going to have something that looks like this and something that looks like this. All right, so it not only has... It has been shifted down, right? It has been shifted down three units. But this vertex 
has moved to the left, right? It's moved to the left. So it's moved to the left two units. So not only, let me, I'm gonna do, do it here. I'm gonna say shifted left two units. All right, so thinking about this, did we really need the graph to know all this stuff? So negative orientation, there was a negative in the, in the equation. Shifted to the left two units, I noticed there's a x plus two. Shifted down three units, I noticed there's a minus three at the end. So what your goal is, is to be able to take an equation and describe the graph without even having the graph. And then maybe you could take this information and might make it easier to actually graph it without having to do any of this information or use any of this information in the table. So our goal is to try to see if we could find a faster way to graph without having to do all this work. Now you still need to know how to do this, but there's going to be times where it would be nice to go straight from this equation to the graph. All right. So, um, some, also something that, that sticks out to me, I'll just mention it now, is this point is our vertex, and it also happens to be at negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 3. Well, I still, I, I notice I have a 2 and a 3 here, right? So there's a connection between what's happening, where that vertex is, and the actual numbers that it's shifting. All right. So in summary, right, uh, the form, general form that I gave you earlier, uh, that, right, the general form that I gave you earlier, uh, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, this last problem we actually saw an equation, we actually saw an equation in that form, right? We actually saw it in this form. Um, now we kind of have a better idea of what all these numbers are doing. And so right below it, I have a kind of a summary of what each one does. So this is kind of key, the key part. So the A value in front, uh, so if we had a number in front like a two, the two made it skinny. It looked stretched. Uh, if it was a one half, if it was a small number, then it looked uh, wide, right? It was compressed. So this number in front, this a value, this a value is going to tell us really, uh, does it look? Is it going to look skinny? Is it going to look wide? It tells us a little bit of how it's going to look, and it's also going to tell us the orientation. So let me zoom into this for a little bit. So the A value, A value, uh, is either going to be, or it's going to tell us two things. Either the orientation is going to be positive or it's going to be negative. It's also going to tell us if the A value happens to be bigger than one, then that means it's going to be stretched or stretched vertically. If that A value looks like a fraction or some decimal, then that means it's stretched horizontally. Or like I mentioned before, sometimes they use the word compressed. All right, the H value, this is the last one we kind of looked at. Uh, this one is going to tell us if it's going to shift to the left or it's going to shift to the, to the right. Uh, and then we're going to probably have to practice this one. I'll come back to this one uh, and might review it some more uh, later. But this is usually where there's going to be some confusion. But for the most part, um, this is what you need to know. It's going to shift either left or right. And that number, if it's negative, it's going to shift to the left. And if it's positive, it's going to shift to the right. But um, and then the k value is this number at the end, 
and it's either going to tell you the graph's going to shift up or down, and if it's a positive K value, then it's going up, and if it's a negative K value, then it's going to be going down. And so, like I mentioned on the last problem, the vertex is the actually the same thing as your H and K. So H and K in the equation is going to give us your vertex. All right. All right, I'm gonna stop uh, there for now. This was pretty lengthy. Um, and then I'm gonna review some of this some more um, later on in the next lesson. All right, let me know if you have any questions and most likely you do. Uh, so hopefully uh, I can answer those uh, when you do ask them or in the next lesson. All right, thank you.